Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. So I'm really excited because today I'm going to do my September TBR and September means that kind of we're officially done with summer and I'm so excited for all of the fall and the spooky feels that are going to be coming up over the next couple of months. I made a batch of pumpkin mini spice cakes the other day in the shape of pumpkins and they're just gorgeous and they have all of those fall flavors so I'm really really getting into my spooky season mode and of course I've had for the last couple of videos um, some decorations up not quite done yet uh, I gotta say I'm really disappointed in what I've seen so far out in the stores here in Canada I don't know if anybody else is experiencing this but even Michael's didn't have any Halloween out they had their fall florals and stuff like that out but didn't really have any Halloween and then I went to Home Sense and Winners and I got a couple of spooky mugs, but there was no Halloween out yet. And it's so funny because here in Canada, it's like Halloween is out for a couple of weeks and then all of a sudden it's Christmas. So hoping to find the sweet spot so I can get some new decor and like I said, add some spooky mugs to my collection and all of that. So enough with the spooky season talk, let's get into the TBR. So first up is The Good House by Tanana Reef Dew, and I am so late to the game with this book. I feel like everyone in the horror community has read this already, and I've had it on my shelf for a couple of months, but I was specifically saving it for this time of year. So super excited to get into this one. The only thing I can see that could be a problem is that the print in this edition is super, super tiny. Um, I don't know if it's just because I need new glasses or if it actually is really, really small. But anyway, really excited to read this one. So it seems that here we kind of have a classic sort of haunted house story going on, but there is also a lot of themes of grief and suicide and stuff like that. So not a spoiler at all, but this woman lives in an ancestral home and her son commits suicide in the house. So that happens right at the beginning of the book. It's right on the back, so no spoilers there. And she ends up leaving and coming back because she wants to sort of get answers on her son's death. And she thinks um, there could be something supernatural going on here. So very, very excited to read this one. I have heard nothing but good things. I haven't heard a single bad review about this book. So super, super excited to finally be getting into this one. So next up is actually a new release. This is The Devil Makes Three by Tori Bolivino. And this book just came out, I believe earlier this week or at the end of last week. And so haven't heard anything about this book yet. So this one was on my most anticipated list of 2021, but I haven't heard anybody else talk about this really. So really super excited to give this one a try. I do think it's more geared towards YA. So we all know that modern day YA is very, you know, the characters can be very whiny and there's a lot of drama and it deals with a lot of romance and stuff like that. So I'm really, really hoping that this one stays on topic and it doesn't kind of veer too, too much off into the weeds with the romance and the whole thing. So here we follow a young girl named Tess and she has a summer job at a boarding school library. So she is just expecting to spend her summer kind of in the stacks of the library and sorting books and the whole thing. She doesn't want anything too exciting to be going on. And then one day a boy named Elliot comes into the library and he wants to sign out a huge number of books on the occult. And when Tess is looking Looking for the books she kind of ends up getting into um, you know this mystery and all of this that has to do with the school so it says here Tessa's search for the books opens a door to a world of dark magic and forgotten places and it sounds like they end up unleashing a devil or a demon that they have to try to get back into the book so Really, really have high hopes for this one. This is definitely something that's right up my alley. Looking for a good adventure here. And, you know, I just hate it whenever I see that there's kind of, you know, two characters that are just meeting for the first time and there's a possibility of romance. Like I said, hoping it doesn't get too far into that, but we'll see how it goes. 
And next up is another booktube favorite. So this is A Head Full of Ghosts by Paul Tremblay. And this is another one that I've seen it on like favorites lists and best of all time and haven't heard anything negative about this book. So really excited to finally be getting into this one. I'm late to the game with this one as well. So here we follow an everyday family named the Barretts and one of their daughters, a teenage daughter, starts to exhibit schizophrenia um, symptoms. So as she kind of gets worse and worse and she's delving into madness, they take her to all sorts of doctors and they don't know what to do with her because her symptoms are so bad and they're so out there and she is just kind of tumbling further and further into mental illness. The family doesn't really know what to do so they call in a Catholic priest and the priest thinks that she's full of demons and recommends an exorcism. So on top of that, the priest also recommends that they bring in a television crew or production crew so that they can film the exorcism and the family can use the money from the production to pay for her medical bills. So that's exactly what they do. They bring in this production crew and there's an exorcism, uh, but they don't expect that the production is going to become a smash hit. And it says here, when events in the Barrett's household explode into tragedy, the show and the incidents it captures becomes the stuff of legends. So this sounds super good and it's fairly short. It's only about 270 pages. So really hope that this one um, lives up to what everybody is saying. And I'm sure that this one is going to be the first of many exorcism stories that I read during this season. So the next up on the list is The Last Apprentice book two. So this is The Curse of the Bane by Joseph Delaney. And I'm currently right now reading book one in this series. And these are all rereads for me. So I read this series years ago when they first came out, um, probably around 2012, 2013. And I really enjoyed them back then. And I'm really enjoying my reread as well. I can't remember a whole lot um, for each story. So really enjoying the reread of these. And it's such a good little adventure. And it's one of those ones that the way it's written, it just really sucks you in and you become part of this whole world and you just want to see all of the um, demons and ghosts and everything that Tom Ward and the spook are fighting. So this specific one has to do with this creature called the Bane and so Tom and the spook have fought all kinds of uh, supernatural creatures like witches and ghasts and all of that but apparently the Bane is something that Tom has never dealt with before and the Bane and the spook have a history so there's kind of a, a revenge sort of plot going on here. So really looking forward to continuing on with the series and I'm going to try to read one of these books a month until I get through the whole thing. And the last physical book that I have up on the list is Little Spooks, a collection of short stories. And I'll insert a picture here because um, this is actually in a really large pile of books that I have to sort through. So this is a debut novel by a lady named Rebecca Kay, and I'm sorry I don't know how to pronounce her last name. I'm going to get that from her um, when I do a review of this book. But she very kindly reached out and asked if I would like a copy for a review, and of course I said yes. This is a very very short little novella of short stories, so really looking forward to this, and of course um, I will do a full review for you guys on the channel, and we love supporting debut and indie authors around Around here so really really looking forward to this one. So as for the ebooks that I wanted to get into this month the first is The Dollhouse by Karis Cotter and as you guys know I've read several books from this author this year and I've really really enjoyed them. So this is a new release coming out on August the 31st. So here we follow a young girl named Alice and she's in a really really tough spot because her parents are getting divorced, her world is kind of falling apart and every summer um, they usually go to their cottage and it's a really fun time so that's all been cancelled and now Alice is being brought to a really really small little community in the middle of nowhere where her mom is going to be a live-in nurse to an elderly lady. So when Alice moves in, the house is really spooky and one day Alice finds a dollhouse up in the attic and it's a perfect replica of the house that she's living in. And then she goes to bed one night and wakes up and a girl is in the bed next to her and this girl looks exactly like one of the dolls in the little dollhouse. So this kind of starts off a mystery and it's a ghost story. So. Karis Cotter really writes 
cozy ghost stories very, very well. It's almost like Darcy Coates for adult ghost stories. She is very much the Darcy Coates of middle grade and really, really looking forward to this book. I just read The Ghost Road by this author and like I said, really enjoyed it. I'm looking for all of those spooky sort of atmospheric feels. It's starting to get really dark early now and I've been lighting candles and everything. So I think this one's really, really gonna be great for fitting in with spooky season. So next up is Shade by Chad Nicholas. So this is a new release coming out this October and Chad very kindly reached out and asked if I would like an ARC for review and of course I said yes. So this book is very much kind of that crime thriller that's sort of intertwined with the supernatural and, and with horror. So very much like um, Take Your Turn Teddy that we read a couple of months ago. So this is very much a story about a serial killer that's killed several girls. And from what I can gather, there is another girl who this killer is hunting and she is very much struggling with her own mental health. She has a lot of skeletons in her closet and a past that's very, very haunting. And then in the second part of the story, we also follow an ex-soldier who's losing his own grip on reality. So here it says, the desperate hunt for a serial killer an ex-soldier losing grip on reality, and a victim who is not sure she's worth saving, come together as past and present intertwine in this explosive psychological thriller that begs the question, can you stop a monster without becoming one? So this sounds like one of those books that it really is going to make you think. And like I said, it has that mental health aspect that's kind of intertwined with a, a psychological thriller and a crime story. And there's probably horror that's kind of wrapped into this as well. So really, really looking forward to this one. And of course, I will be doing a full review for you guys on the channel once I'm finished. And then you can all go pick it up on October 1st when it comes out. And then the last book that I have planned for this month is The Livingston Girls by Brianna Morgan. And I just recently discussed this book, so I'm not gonna go into a whole synopsis here, but if you missed my most recent book haul, this book is a boarding school story. So we have an all girls boarding school with a main character who is coming as a new student. And the school also houses a coven, a secret coven of witches. And of course, our protagonist, Rose, finds out that she has abilities and she is the newest member of this coven. And in the story, so she's dealing with having to, you know, get used to her new life in an all-girls boarding school. She finds out she's a witch and she also starts to have feelings for her female roommate. So there definitely is a little bit of an LGBT current flowing through here, which I absolutely love. So this is the first either in a series or a duology, I'm not really sure, but really, really looking forward to this because we all know my love of boarding school stories. And of course, this one has witches intertwined in it as well. So I think this is going to be a really, really good one. So like I said, that's all I have planned for this month, but I'm actually off the first uh, week of September from work. So I'm not sure if I want to kind of put more books in there or if I want to work on another project, but we'll see how it goes. And I think that's probably going to fill up the majority of the month anyway. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure to give me a thumbs up and leave me a comment down below because you know I love chatting with you guys. But until next time, stay spooky everybody. Bye.